Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is the TeacherCast podcast, episode number 175. Today, we're going to be talking all about professional development, or should we say professional learning? And today, we have two amazing guests on from Corwin to talk all about a brand new professional professional learning service called Visible Learning Plus. Before we bring our guests on, I want to remind you that we've got some great things happening on TeacherCast as we move through the end of the school year into the summer. We're, of course, looking forward to seeing everybody in Chicago at the ISTE conference. We've got some great sessions going on, and we are going to be all over the place. Check us out over at TeacherCast.net slash I-S-T-E. I want to bring on a guest that's been on the show before. I want to bring on the president of Corwin, Mr. Mike Soule. Mike, welcome to TeacherCast. How are you today? I'm doing great, Jeff. It's wonderful to be back. Thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what is new and exciting at Corwin these days. Uh, well, I've been at Corwin now for eight years. Um, we have gone through an uh, absolute evolution from being the uh, blue chip publisher of the who's who in K-12 professional development to in the last uh, five years diversifies into professional learning. And um, Visible Learning Plus was actually one of the first programs and services that we brought out. Um, so we're thrilled that we now uh, are continuing to partner with John Hattie, uh, but also now own uh, the IP the services, and will be partnering very closely with Dr. Hattie uh, on developing a whole suite of new visible learning uh, lines, services, and books, and uh, and training. And and I, I'm excited that you guys have brought that to TeacherCast, and I, I'm really looking forward to being able to share this out there with all the technology integration specialists, with all the administrators that are listening to our show today. And if you guys are out there interested in learning more, you can, of course, reach out to us on Twitter at TeacherCast or, you know, leave us a voice message. Let us know what you think about this, and maybe we can uh, have you guys all on the show to talk about professional development in your school district. I also want to bring on Dr. Julie Smith, the Senior Director of Visible Learning for Corwin. Julie, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great, Jeff. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for having, uh, thank you for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, Jeff, um, I guess just having this opportunity to be the Senior Director of Global Visible Learning is just almost a dream that's come true for me. I've had the opportunity to be a principal for 17 years, a, a professor. I've been an author consultant. I've worked with Corwin um, around consulting for the last five years, but my passion has really been around um, Professor Hattie's work with visible learning. And so this is, um, I feel like, a, a gift um, for me, not only to be able to work with Corwin, but to work with John Hattie, who I've had the privilege to work with for the last Last 10 years. So, Mike, before we really dive into the professional learning series, talk to us a little bit about Corin, because most people think about Corin as a book publisher, but clearly Corin is so much more than just that. Yeah, we are. Thanks for uh, asking the question. It's been a really uh, amazing uh, handful of years here at Corwin. We have expanded uh, worldwide now, and what we realized was the greatest uh, asset that Corwin had were our authors. And so not only do we continue to publish about 100 new titles in every discipline uh, that you can imagine, uh, so we've got resources that are available to, to folks. Uh, they continue to be peer-reviewed and are uh, really the best of the best. Um, but we knew that we needed to go further, especially now that administrators are under such um, conditions around accountability, making sure that they can show a return on investment and is their impact. A book can only do so much. And we felt at core when our responsibility didn't end when a box of books were delivered to a school district, that should really be the beginning of the next relationship that we have with administrators and decision makers to help them help the practitioners do their job better. And so that's why we diversified into the services line, um, visible learning being one of them. We'll talk much more about that. But the other areas that we're concentrating in are in literacy, in equity, and in uh, assessment and how you then measure the impact around all of those things. So we are, we're thrilled about where we are right now and, and what's going on. And uh, um, the sky's the limit as far as we're concerned. <laughs> I, I love that you guys are certainly bringing professional learning into the school districts. Talk to us a little bit about the relationship with John Hattie. How did it come about and why is it so important that everybody takes a look at this great new platform? You mind if I start, Julie, and then I'll nope, hand go it for it. to you? Nope. Um, we, um, the Visible Learning uh, Plus work was uh, designed out of the seminal research that John has done uh, over the last 20 years. John wanted to ask the critical question, what works in classrooms and how do we measure it? 
what he's come back with is the largest database that has ever been created to talk about and measure what works in classroom. It allows us to move from where we have been as professionals of I think, I hope, I feel, to I know, I can measure it. This is the empirical proof that we can um, talk about. That is really advancing our profession. It's what policymakers have been asking for. It's what pundits are demanding. It's what parents want. And now it's our job, uh, working with John, to bring it out to the schools all over the world and under Julie's leadership. And so we're, we're thrilled that at Corwin we can support it, we can expand it, and John um, has entrusted us with his greatest gift in terms of this research and uh, working with us shoulder to shoulder uh, every day in decision makings around how we're going to scale the visible learning work and how we're going to get people to really understand John's research even more importantly. The website is visiblelearningplus.com. Now, Julie, let me ask you, how does a school district implement this model? What, if, if we're interested in doing this, how does it work? You know, Jeff, that's a, um, a great question. And when I think about implementing and also think about the research around professional development, we know that a big component of that is also job embedded. So I would say that our model of implementation um, can work differently with um, different schools based on their needs. But where we start, um, because we know that school districts are extremely and schools are, are complex, but at the heart of that work is teachers and, and leaders and students working together to have the great impact. So where we start with our um, sites and um, that we're working with is asking the question, what do you want visible learning to answer for you? Because John is very clear to help us understand that visible learning is not a program. Visible learning is a way of thinking. Um, it's about evaluating and knowing our impact. So it's not about one any professional development program. And so when we look at that, then we begin to um, talk with teachers and and leaders, and we look at the implementation um, almost with a framework, because Mike um, talks so nicely about John's research, which certainly is the foundation of what we do, but then John has also done a summary of his research through what he calls 10 mind frames. Those are the mind frames that teachers and leaders need to hold and believe and, and um, to work through within their schools to show that they'll have a greater impact. And then within that, we have the five strands. And those five strands uh, focus around creating the visible learner. They focus around knowing thy impact. They focus around inspired teaching. Um, they focus around feedback. And they also focus around the entire system within the school and within the classroom. Now, is this a system that when a school district picks it up, there is... I would assume there's some kind of a training model to help the trainers Absolutely. train the teachers, right? Talk to Absolutely. us a little bit about what a school district picks up when they, uh, when they purchase this. So what they pick up, Jeff, is actually um, a whole suite of offerings. And along with that comes highly trained, skilled um, professional consultants that have a depth of understanding the visible learning, who have um, significant background and experiences within the, within the schools. And so we would go in and we would develop, um, because it's not going to be, look the same, and that's what I love in every single school. But where we start is what we call the foundational series. And the foundational series starts with a day, because we want everybody to understand John's research. We want them to be able to um, know the five strands that are living and that frame his research. And so that's, a, that's an overview day that we really like for um, all of our participants, school leaders, and teachers to be part of. And then after that, what we do is um, part of, we begin to design what we call a school impact process. And again, we want to align that tightly with the school's um, school improvement plan so they're not two separate um, programs or um, processes that they have going on, that there's a tight connection between those. And so we also, within that, we have um, sessions around um, for the um, teacher as well as for the leader. We call those like EIA 1 and 2, which is Evidence into Action, and VLAT, Visible Learning for Teachers, which is all about impact cycles. 
It's about the plan, do, study, act, about finding out the degree to which they have professional development. Um, we work them through that. We, have, um, we also have impact coaches because we know through professional development that there needs to be um, deep implementation, and we know that that comes from coaching. And so we have significant um, impact coaches that we train. Um, and then we have a whole suite of tools um, that we're offering, such as a mind frame survey, um, a school um, capability assessment where we come into schools and work with teachers to assess that's their degree of impact that they're having. Um, so again, and then we go into the depth of um, the strands that I talked about. Um, but then also we know that visible learning is content free. It's cross grade level, cross curriculum, and cross the content. So then we also can take schools much more deeper with a lens of visible learning into math, into science, into um, literacy, if that is an area of their focus. So it sounds like when you're working through the visible learning system, it really is creating that partnership with you and your team to create an individually individualized learning plan for that school district. Absolutely. And I think, Jeff, I think when I look at the schools that we're in, I mean, across the country now, I mean, we're in, you know, we've had an impact on over 100,000 um, teachers. We're in over 16 countries. And while I think there's similarities in the program, I would also like to see that we're going in and we start with the student first. What is it that your students need? Where is the gap in the learning for your kids? And then we work that model backwards. And what kind of feedback have you gotten from your school districts? Oh, well, and having just come into this position um, a couple months ago, um, I was out in the field with my schools. And I was just most recently, um, the last couple of years, spent about 20 days in um, a school district in Texas. And what I love about that is what we're hearing is that we can visibly see the changes happening in the classrooms. The classrooms look from the day one of the school year to the very end, they look very different as what's up on the walls, how teachers are teaching, the questions kids are asking. So when we talk about visible learning, we can actually see the learning taking place for teachers and for kids. So that's a huge part of our um, feedback. Um, we've also seen um, and had conversations about the impact on student learning, greater own students taking greater ownership in their learning, higher levels of engagement. Also, um, we've reported um, parents as we bring them into the partnership, having a greater impact of wanting to be this partner with their schools. So, Mike, I would assume that any school district out there that's looking into this might be saying to themselves, I already have a plan for professional development. We've been doing it. It's successful. Our teachers are not saying anything wrong. Why is this system so different, so unique, and so special? I think the animating force of what makes it so different is the research mm -hmm. and the yeah. fact that um, we can uh, measure, make visible what it is that teachers are doing. When you boil a piece of this down, um, it's simple. It's not simplistic. It's actually very complex because of the complexity of what happens in schools. Um, but when you think about teachers as the, an evaluator of their own impact, are they really delivering on what it is and the whole reason they went into the profession in the first place to change children's lives, to measure and believe that children deserve at a minimum one year's growth over one year's time? How can you articulate to anyone and to yourself, most importantly, are you having that impact and how do you measure it? Our system helps them articulate that and provide a vocabulary and a framework. The second piece is students knowing what to do when they don't know what to do. That is what you would imagine and hope for every child, but that's not what's happening. Students are dependent on teachers in many cases. What do I do next? Is this on the test? Why am I here? Is this ever gonna be relevant? When we see classes going through this transformation, uh, one of the other byproducts is there are almost no behavioral issues. Why? Mm -hmm. Because students own their learning. They know what to do. If they have a deficiency, it's then up to them. They have a responsibility too, to find out where they can get those resources or the next steps. The kinds of conversations that then happen between teachers and students is um, amazing. And teachers to administrators, is amazing. So this is an approach. It is bespoke in the sense that we're using the data and the experiences of, of everyone. It's complex, both because of the research, but because what happens in classrooms and what teachers have to do around their instructional moves is complex. So Julie, as we look through the Visible Learning Plus system here, I think one of the questions that I have is why would a school district need to have a professional learning plan like this put in? I know many school districts do their own thing. Why would they want to bring this into the schools? 
I think, Jeff, that's a great question. And I think back at myself as a, as a principal for um, 17 years, why I would want this into my schools. Um, I know that as a principal, I used to always think that it was my role to bring in um, as much professional development as I could. We would learn and then teach and implement. But what we didn't do, and I think this speaks to Mike, is that we did not continually evaluate our own impact. We looked at student achievement data and we said, wow, you know, we had an increase, let's celebrate, or it went down and we were concerned, but yet we didn't have the answers as to why we had a decrease in student achievement or why we had the impact. So we were either lucky or losing ground, but we were working really hard. What I love with Professor Hattie's research is it really begins to take the guesswork out um, of knowing why we're having that impact. And so I think, going back to your question about why would a school district um, want, because number one, it's the, the largest body of, of research, but along with that, we can help schools plan their journey to have a greater impact on student learning. Now, with all the research that Professor Hattie was doing, you said it was over 20 years, and I believe it was mostly done in Australia. Am I correct about that? No, Jeff. I mean, Professor Hattie's done, um, research has been it, done internationally. Okay. And so while um, much of it there's in Australia, we look at New Zealand, um, a lot of his work was done right here in the United States. And, and what we love is he continues to do that research. Um, I was curious to see how the professional learning that, that you guys are offering is differing between the different places in the world. Do you know, a United States school, are you, is it the same type of a program as a school in New Zealand or in Australia? It, it is. The approach is the same, but um, how it's been picked up has been different. Mm. And um, in Australia, uh, there's no... Um, question, 90% of the engagements that we have in Australia and New Zealand are all multi-year, long-term, roll up your sleeves, we're going to stick with this and um, find the change, and, and they're seeing incredible results. In the United States, no surprise to you, everyone wants to be number two or number three. And so it takes time for people to begin to adopt, and we're still in that adoption uh, curve, even though we've been doing this work here for the last uh, four or five years. Um, right now, we're having the first groups of um, schools that have been with us for uh, three years so that we can move from the anecdotal to the evidence of what's happening. And I think that's going to accelerate the work that we're doing in the U.S. and Canada because now there are places that they can, others can look to and uh, find out what it is and, and how it works. And I think the other part, Jeff, that's interesting is um, because we're coming at this actually in the way that uh, is very sophisticated – Schools who look at this work have to be prepared to do the work. Mm -hmm. Making it learning visible is complex, and we celebrate the good things that are happening, but we also have to be honest about what isn't happening. And so when you make that visible, you need to have courageous leadership and people who are willing to um, stand and say, we're going to make the improvements. We know now how to get there and how to measure it. That takes a long time. And a lot of people want to have, what are the six easy you know, exactly. uh, steps? And because yeah. um, I can get my head around that and I don't have to think much about it. Well, let, let's kind of dive into that one a little bit here. If a school district is ready to approach Corin and sign up for Visible Learning Plus here, what do they need to have ready? Is there a, a checklist? Is there a sheet that they go down with? Well, what, what does the school district really need as they're contacting you to say, let's start this partnership? I think, Jeff, the first thing is, is the interest to know more, that they reach out to us because um, built into the, um, the visible, visible learning change model, we have systems in place or what we call tools of evaluation where we like to begin um, by having a, um, a team of trained consultants that they go into the school with um, surveys, um, they look at, um, they talk with students, they talk with um, teachers, they talk with a, le a leadership team, and they really try to get um, a real focus and understanding of the degree to which, when we look at the visible learning strands, to which they're already currently in place. 
And so that's part of that. We also have, as I shared before, um, other surveys like the Mind Frame. We have um, matrices built into the school impact process for teachers and leaders that cause them to be able we get they're almost like a pre and a post. Mm -hmm. And so it really helps them not only um, begin to look at their systems and then always um, aligning that to the impact that we're having on student achievement. So it's really a lot of the work is already built in. I mean, I think as Mike said so nicely that they need to have that willingness to open up to that. This is not a sit and get. It's not a program. The teachers are not going to leave with 10 things they can do tomorrow. What they will leave with is an understanding that I need to be looking at my kids differently. I need to be talking more about learning than I do need to be talking about teaching. And those are the conversations that through the collective efficacy of PLCs and grade level teams and department teams coming together, that's where this um, work really lives and breathes. And then they go out to the classroom and they implement their cycles and then come back and talk about if we're having an impact, let's celebrate. That's about us. But if we're not having an impact, that's also about us. And that's a hard one for teachers we know to say if kids aren't learning, that's about us. But that's really what John puts in front of us. It's an amazing system here. You can find out more about it at visiblelearningplus.com. And if you're on Twitter, you can certainly check them out at, at Visible Learning. Now, we had said at the beginning of the show here that there's a lot of great stuff happening over the summertime. I I'm looking forward to being in Chicago for the ISTE conference but that's not the only conference happening in Chicago this year. Talk to us about your Visible Learning Conference that's happening in July. We'll be having our uh, fifth annual Visible or annual, we now call it the annual Visible <laughs> Learning Conference. We'll be in uh, Chicago uh, July 8th through the 11th. We've got some pre-cons and post-cons that go along with the uh, annual Visible Learning. Um, that, um, that conference is sold out. Um, but you never know. Seats could come available. Um, there's still space in some of the pre-cons and the post-cons. But um, over the summer, we'll also be doing a number of institutes um, around uh, the country. These are smaller, more intimate settings. Uh, John will be participating in a number of them, um, both here in the, the U.S. as well as in Canada. And if uh, you visit the, the Visible Learning website or Corwin.com, you can get more information. Um, those institutes are a great way to begin mm -hmm. the journey and, and uh, meet folks who are practitioners that are doing the work and can really answer the questions of, so can I do it too? Well, there's certainly a lot of great things happening in Chicago, and we hope to see you guys over the summertime at ISTE. Guys, I want to say thank you so much for joining us on the show today. And Mike, you're now officially a veteran of the TeacherCast podcast. This makes the second appearance. I want to say thank you to Corwin for, for coming on the show. Mike, Julie, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, thank you Jeff. Jeff. Appreciate back. it. And of course, we want to say thank you out there for taking the time to make TeacherCast a part of your professional development network. There's other great ways that you can reach out and be a part of this. You can find us on Twitter at TeacherCast or leave us a voicemail over at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know how you're ending the school year. On behalf of everybody on the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students. <laughs>